All right, so let's talk a little bit about the five advantages to investing in mobile home communities. So number one, limited maintenance expenses and responsibilities. So one of the gentlemen he interviewed, he, you know, I'm just gonna read this, it was really, really good. Um, he said, within a few years, oh man, my, um, my printing cut off a little bit, but I remember what he spoke about, so I've heard this several times now. So he talked about, you know, he started out years ago uh, investing in multifamily. He said within a few years, he had acquired about 500 units, but he struggled to, to grow his business above that threshold. Doesn't mean it can't be done, it means he couldn't do it. Largely because of the maintenance intensive nature of traditional multifamily assets. So in 2005, he purchased his first mobile home community and a year later, he sold the apartment complexes and plunged, sold them all, plunged uh, head first, headlong into investing in mobile home communities, which he says, quite simply, they're just much, much easier to manage. So why is that? So he said to illustrate the, the maintenance burden, which is the big thing, um, and there's some other things as well, you know, he told LoopNet of the 43 communities that he owns now, multi um, uh, mobile home park communities, only four of them have a full-time maintenance employee. So in apartments, anything over 60 units uh, required a full-time, you know, certified air conditioning technician. Those guys were tough to maintain and hold, so that was a big issue for them. Um, so once again, let's, let's reiterate. Why is, in my opinion, why is it better? Because we're just renting land. Like we're just renting land. So we don't have to get involved in the maintenance and the upkeep of the homes. We're not fixing toilets and air conditioners and leaky faucets. You know, that's the stuff that the homeowners get to take care of. And that's the stuff that truth be told, apartment owners, like they hate it. Like it's, it's a big, big expense and it's a big headache. So let's talk about another benefit, less turnover. So one of the most significant costs that owners of traditional multifamily complexes contend with is turnover. By nature, apartments uh, are more transitory. They have anywhere between 40 and 50% turnover on an annual basis. Jeez, that's insane. Conversely, uh, this, this particular investor said that their turnover with their, their mobile home community is approximately 15%. 15%. So mobile home parks tend to be populated by long-term, more long-term residents. Uh, why is it? It's simple. They own their home. Homes aren't moving. They're not going anywhere. They can't find anything cheaper. That's it. Like, that's it. Like, it's as simple as that. They're invested in the property. Like, they own it. it whether they have a, a, a loan with a mortgage company, maybe they do, maybe they don't. If they do, they're working on paying that off. If they don't, all they're paying is lot rent. You know, if they're paying three, four, five, six hundred dollars a month for lot rent, where are they going to move to? An apartment, pay twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred. A house, pay fifteen hundred. You know, or more. It's the cheapest thing for them. And there's been surveys. He didn't get into this. I think you should have. But in this article, um, he failed to address some research that's been done that people are much higher, you know, statistically happier in mobile home communities than they are living in an apartment. Why is that? They have their own green space, their own little yard. They're not sharing a ceiling, a wall or, you know, floor with other people. You know, people want the privacy. That's another big thing that, um, that I found I really like about the mobile home park model. Significant upside potential. So I love this from an investor point, investing point of view. So lot rents at mobile home communities have trailed inflation by a considerable margin over the last 50 to 60 years. Uh, the average lot rent in America is believed to be about $280 per month. And the average lot rent in 1960 was $500 a month in today's dollars. Okay. So that means what we're, you know, below or around 50, a little higher maybe than 50% of what lot rent should be. That creates a substantial upside for investors. I'll tell you that, you know, apartment rents are, are not 50% underpriced, I guarantee you that. So there's a big potential for long, there's also a big potential 
for long-term development opportunities in some regions, right? So some investors are uh, approaching the mobile home park investment model as a land investment with where, you know, that land, it's a land play within five, 10, 15 years, there's going to be substantial money paid by developers to acquire that land, obviously. Um, so, but it's cash flowing land in the meantime, and cash flows really well if you do it right. So that's what they're doing. They're, they're viewing, he says they're viewing their mobile home parks as a land bank. I love that. And there's, um, uh, there's a lot of investors who are doing that kind of similar, you know, to car washes is, is my perspective on that. You know, they, they'll develop like a car wash right on the outskirts of town and in 10, 15 years, that piece of land is going to sell for a million dollars, right? And in the, in the interim, it is cash flowing, cash positive asset. All right. So moving along, market resilience, market resilience. So it used to be prior to say 40 years, you know, four years ago that mobile home parks had higher cap rates and they were easier to buy because they're more affordable. That's changed. We know that has changed. Um, and that's changed the last four years and cap rates are now very similar apartments. Okay. So I actually just went to the wrong page. All right. Page we already read. Sorry about that. So, all right. So let's talk about, let me grab my notes. I apologize. Market resilience. Okay. Let's talk about market resilience. So he talks about how they're almost really recession proof. And, and, and they, and I agree, like they almost are right. So during good times and bad manufactured housing seems to be weathering the storm very, very well. And uh, Frank mentioned that the industry verges on contrarian uh, and can out often perform better, perform better during intervals when the broader economy is experiencing economic distress. I talked about this at the beginning of the series. And if you're just hopping in later in the series, go back, start and watch all the way from beginning to end. But I talked about the insulation of this investment uh, class and yeah, you know, and I will never say it's a hundred percent, you know, uh, recession proof because, you know, we all know things can happen, but, but it does have some characteristics that helps it um, absolutely perform better. Even mentioned that sales tend to pick up when the economy is doing uh, you know, poorly because um, people need more affordable housing then, right? They're trying to downsize, trying to find something that's affordable. Um, and that, that's why it's such a good thing. You know, it feels, it, it feels not feels like it feels like a, a void of a fundamental need being primary housing, right? People need housing. They may have boats and they may take vacations and do all this kind of stuff. In the time of recession, they're going to have a house. And, uh, and we already know statistically people would prefer to live in a mobile home than a, um, uh, an apartment. And even let's talk about like other investment opportunities. You're investing in office. How's that doing during the pandemic? Ooh, you know, you're investing in, you know, multifamily and, you know, you're not, you can't evict people. Ugh. Well, a mobile home park is different. They own their home. We're just charging for the lot rent. That's the big difference.